We all like routines. They let us know we can knock out things in a set amount of time to make reliable progress towards our goals. So we can fit that in even on our busiest days. Janthier Wilds is not an exception. So let's go through the best daily practices available to you from Janthier so you can pick and choose what you will add to your routine. Tiered hearts require 14 days to fully complete the achievements which give plenty of awesome rewards themselves and even after that will unlock repeatable achievements with yet unknown to me rewards. I love a good mystery. So naturally, these are on the list. These can be completed the usual way by completing tasks listed by the renown heart in the radius, or events will also contribute a significant amount of completion if they are done inside the radius. Janthier Wild's hearts are considerable slower to complete on average, however, they generally have a much wider radius to be completed in, thus allowing for events to assist significantly for many of them. There's also the new addition of the renown tokens from each zone, which are typically awarded from completing some events, but not all events. Lowland Shore Renown tokens you'll likely be swimming in, but Janthier Sentry is a lot more difficult to earn. You can complete the Swift Skiffs and View from the Top Adventures in the northern section of Janthier Sentry to earn a reliable two Renown tokens per day. Previously, you were able to repeat them over and over. However, ArenaNet has patched this out, despite it not being listed as a resolved issue in the Launch Week Known Issues thread. The biggest problem with that is that the events in the Southwest and to a lesser degree Southeast hearts are hard to come by at times. And according to the wiki and my own testing so far, there's only three reliable events that give you Janthier Century renowned tokens, which are listed here. Of note, these tokens can be used even if they are in your bank, so you can cram them into some corner, especially if you like to play multiple characters. However, only one heart completion per day counts towards your renown tier progress achievement, so don't expect more than the standard heart rewards if you're doing more than one per day on your account. Now, to make even more progress while you're running around doing those hearts, you're going to need your war claw out as much as possible. The reason for this is the war closet newly improved sniff skill, which will discover treasure nearby that you can run over to and have the war claw dig up for you. These will give you code and caches, and they are going to make sure you're stockpiling up as many unusual coins as possible. In addition, these can give you the Mersant rune stones that are going to be needed to craft Janthier Wild's legendary items, such as the upcoming spear. These are worth a decent amount at the time of recording, but of course it's impossible to tell if they will continue to go up or down as the expansion goes on, since we don't know how many will be needed for the legendaries. So, whether or not you choose to sell them now or later would be up to you if you're not going to craft them. I personally am hoarding all of these that I can get at the moment. Now, these caches aren't the only thing you'll want to pit stop for, and certainly not the only way to get Mersat runestones. But before we get to those, we need keys to open up some of those rare caches that you'll uncover. While the minor caches are most common and won't need a key, you can get major or mythical ones that still need code and cache keys. While the minor caches are most common and won't need a key, you can get major or mythical ones that do need code and cache keys. At both the Astral Ward Moon Camp and the Forager's Hunt Waypoint, there are unusual coin collectors that will sell these keys. By default, they will sell four keys per day for one map currency and 1,050 karma. They share the sale limit, so you only need to visit one of these vendors per day. With the Janthier Explorer Proficiency, they'll sell 21 additional for double the price of the first four, though the majority of you should likely only need the four per day at most, but it is good to know that there is a backup if you start to stockpile your caches. Once you max out Scavenger of the Wilds, you'll essentially be able to buy these four keys per day for completing only two events, so there's no reason you shouldn't make this a habit now. Now for the additional pit stops. In each Janthier zone, there's two gatherable materials unique to each zone that will be valuable to you. In the lowlands, you're going to want to keep an eye out for honey flowers and lowland pines. And in Janthier Sentry, it's Titan Charged Ore and Rotted Titan Ambers. These new specialty resources can deposit into your material storage and are used for crafting Janthier Wild's decor items, the new Titan Plate Armor set, and almost certainly the upcoming Legendary Armors as well. In addition to this, however, 
I'd encourage you to be on the lookout for, or even add into your daily rotation here, these larger patches of normal resources. The reason for this is the mastery at the bottom of the lowland Coden line gives you a chance to gather map specific items whenever you gather normal nodes on Janthier Wild's maps. While the chance is small enough that it may not be worth stopping for every average node, it's certainly worth it for high density concentrations, especially when you throw in a glyph of volatility gathering tool. In Lowland Shore, we have three high density node clusters, a patch of cabbage just south of the Harvest Den waypoint, the large farm on the east side of the bear paw fields with various plants, and a large grapevine farm north of the Torpor Tavern. Upon testing, these are all part of the same node cluster, meaning that if you harvest all three, you can have some of them despawn on you, especially if you've changed maps. As with each technical node cluster, you can only harvest a certain number of them. Now, as far as securing more Mersant tokens, it's as simple as fighting gravity. Well, I suppose that makes it sound awfully difficult, but it's, it's simple jumping puzzles. The first is a jumping puzzle that is actually also just an event that pops up, which you've probably done at the apiary holt called the Buzzy Treetops. You collect a jar, jump up the tree branches to collect seven honey samples, and you're one Mersat token richer. If the event is not currently up, you can talk to the NPC here and say that you would like to uh, gather the honey sample. The next is the Veil Brazier Jumping Puzzle at the Lamplighter's Perch Point of Interest, where you glide down through the canyon and light 10 Brazhers. The third takes place at the Well-Hidden Queen's Confidence Point of Interest and involves talking to the bees Beavis, Combs, and Honey in that order. And this video right here is your perfect step-by-step -step guide to finishing both the Veil Brazier and Queen's Confidence jumping puzzles.